Okay, everybody, welcome back to the podcast. We are joined once again by Dr. Matt Briggs, a return guest, and we're going to talk about why everything you believe is wrong. That's a provocative title, if there ever, <laughs> if there ever was one. Importantly, not why everything you know is wrong, because knowledge, of course, demands that your belief be true, but why everything you believe is wrong. This is the title of an upcoming book by uh, by Matt here. It's coming out very soon. We'll talk more about that at the end and how to get it. But yeah, Matt, welcome back to the show. Good to have you on. Thanks for having me back. Pleasure yeah. to be here. Yeah. So last time we talked about the other book that of yours that came out fairly recently, The Price of Panic, and just tried to diagnose all of the absolute insanity in the world, which I'm sure we'll be trying to do again. But uh, give us a little two two um, pieces of background I'd like to hear, Matt. One is, uh, yeah, I guess the formal stuff. Who are you? What do you do? How'd you get to how'd you get to be there? And then also what what prompted this book? What inspired this new one that you've you're just about to release? I uh, am the statistician to the stars. I, I started off as a regular type professor, uh, but got canceled. And now I'm out on my own uh, doing consulting work and the like. Uh, hence, in, mostly in medicine and other areas, which is why I was led into doing the price of panic, mm -hmm. looking at all the idiocy and, uh, and, and, and insanity and tyranny that's flowed out of this. Mm -hmm. This is a crisis created by uh, our government and the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then th they use this crisis. They say, hey, look, we created this disease. We know best how to cure this disease. We know the solution for it. And they've been going strong ever since and haven't slowed down. There's nothing that's going to slow them down on this, mm -hmm. I think, uh, until something else bigger comes around. Now, this right. book, this book is uh, my reading of uh, uh, philosophy of the left. Got if it. You, they do have things to say. They have uh, they have interesting things to say. Everything they have to say is wrong, uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And this book takes apart every popular art every popular article of faith that they have. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, one by one. Not every single uh, belief that they have, uh, but the most popular ones, the biggest ones, the ones that we're most likely to see uh, day in and day out. And I go through them step by step. The book doesn't have to be read in any specific order, mm -hmm. but it goes through all these fallacies that are employed by our woke cousins mm -hmm. and dismantles them, shows you why they're wrong. Uh, you know, it's a fun book in that sense. I don't expect it to create any kind of revolution or anything of <laughs> that, but, but it's good to have for people on our side to see where these arguments are coming from and to have yeah. uh, rebuttals ready uh, at the ready so that you could use them. Not that they are convinced by evidence or even demonstrating flaws in their own errors. This is, this is, uh, this is, it would, that particular fault that they have of not even uh, understanding their own mistakes is called mm -hmm. what I call the meta fallacy. Right, right. And we can, mm -hmm. we can talk about that later if you're interested. Yeah, I, I'm definitely you know. interested. Right. Um, so, yeah, really important, very much needed project. Um, uh, you have at the beginning of your book from the excerpt that I have. Fun read, too, let me say. Fun read. One, one of the things is, I don't know, you know, I don't read a, a lot of material from statisticians, but I imagine that you're probably rare and in, in not just being good with numbers, but good with words as well. So I wanted to pay you that, that compliment. Your reading's a lot, of, very engaging, a lot of fun. So you say uh, that there's a list of propositions uh, that the majority does not believe, but which are true. I'd like to maybe just trot a few of these out just to give people a flavor of what's in your book. Read on. Yeah, science cannot answer every question put to it, not now and not eventually either. Yeah, that seems to be like a majority perspective, certainly among people who are left-leaning, right? It is not always right to correct a wrong. Women cannot do whatever they want with their bodies, men neither. There is no right or wrong side of history. Science, this is important, is no more self-correcting than any other human endeavor. There is no wisdom in crowds, and you keep going on. Let me get a few more in here. Miracles happen. God exists. You cannot not believe that you have free will. There is no such thing as a transsexual. So uh, you're you're willing to go right into it here, uh, Doctor Briggs. <laughs> no, I, hit a, I, I hope I hit every big area. I don't think I left anything out. There's nothing in here. I want to make very clear. There's nothing in this book about any kind of political policy that one must adopt, or what's the best number of uh, people to let into the country, either legally or illegally, or any, uh, anything like that. There's no policy in this. Mm -hmm. This is purely arguments 
about foundational beliefs that the left has, the woke ha have, mm -hmm. that they might not even know that they have. Right. But yeah. nevertheless, they're operating from. So that's what we try to talk about uh, one by one. All of those big things, all the stuff that you see all the time that they create policies from. Mm -hmm. their beliefs or they create laws or de facto laws or rules and embolden mm -hmm. the bureaucracy to do all kinds of things through these through these type of things that you just mentioned i have a whole list of them at the beginning and i'll soon have uh uh i think amazon's going to have the peek inside the books you'll be able to see those but i'll have it on my website uh, starting tomorrow yeah awesome so let's uh let's take it piece by piece for a little bit here so uh, the science. All right, let's talk about the science, right? This is a big one. Last time we had a conversation, um, I'm, I'm Matt, I'm still not able to wrap my head around what is actually going right. Like going on, right. The, the sheer insanity of it, because we have policy after policy, uh, based on, uh, failed prediction after failed prediction after failed prediction. And, you know, there's a lot of punting to experts, right? When people kind of, and people do seem to become, are becoming more skeptical of a lot of these policies, right? A lot of false promises, a lot of exposed deception, outright lies, just a lot of really funky, weird stuff going on, but mostly just a lot of failed predictions, right? It's like, hey, your, your hypothesis here is making a prediction. And it's not only that we like don't land where we should expect to if your hypothesis were true. It's like, it's like we land on another continent. At different times, especially with things like the lockdowns and the mass and all this. Now, people will say, no, you're just not an expert in this. You're not an expert. But Matt, isn't it like just a, a basic, very easy to understand fact of scientific reasoning that if, if, if your hypothesis makes certain predictions, if it predicts X and we consistently see not X, isn't that at least some initial warrant for skepticism, what these people are saying? Help us to understand what's going on here. <laughs> that, that is, uh, I would take to be the definition of science. Right. Uh, you, you, make, you have models that make predictions. When the prediction, predictions fail, your model has been uh, proved wrong. That's it. And you have to abandon it or modify it or change it, make it into a different model. Mm -hmm. But now I want to make very clear. I use the word experts in a very distinct sense, mm -hmm. uh, borrowing from Burnham's uh, the Managerial Revolution, uh, a book he wrote four, uh, 80 years ago, uh, in which he described this new form of government that we were entering into, the old capitalism we were leaving behind and entering into this managerial uh, state or states. It's It's gone much worse since that time. I think we are now living in a, a sort of half oligarchy, half uh, expertocracy. Mm -hmm. An expert is a person who has credentials or training but who aligns himself with the ruling party, with the ruling regime, mm -hmm. uh, so that people like myself who have a lot of training and credentials and so forth have expertise, but we're not an expert. Mm -hmm. You only see people called upon and called experts uh, when they support the ruling class in one way or another. Now, all of these experts that you're hearing from with all of these failed models mm -hmm. uh, produce their failures and they're always in the same direction, which is in support of whatever government measures uh, the, the, the regime is touting at the time. And all of those are in favor of them increasing their power or their wealth. Mm -hmm. It's very important to understand that this expertocracy oligarchy is not a government in the traditional sense that we're used to under capitalism, where we have mm -hmm. Congress supposedly being the supreme, uh, the supreme of the land. It's no longer that case at all. It's not the presidency either. Uh, we don't have an executive that's uh, running rampant here. We have a man who uh, doesn't quite understand even what he's doing there is supposed to be the most uh, powerful man in the world. And that's just not true. There's people behind him, however, mm -hmm in and out of the what we would think of the formal structure of government who are running things. This is not a conspiracy or anything. This is not some tinfoil hat based uh, supposition on my part. This is just the fact. Right. This is the way the things are being run right now. Mm -hmm. So these experts, these scientists who are running around doing these things, we can give a good example in uh, Neil Ferguson out of uh, England. Yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. He he famously or infamously uh, panicked the world with his Corona Doom forecast mm -hmm. back in, I think it was March or April, March of uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. It was an appallingly stupid forecast. It was just the dumbest thing you could imagine. He had, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people dying a day by the June, by June, I think it was, or July of 2020 in the United States. Mm -hmm. 
just a ridiculous figure. But it was believed because at that time, what people really wanted, uh, based on the propaganda coming out of China, was to lock down. Mm -hmm. They wanted to put people out of work and they wanted to grasp power. And they did. They did. We saw how many reports have we seen that all of the oligarchs became fabulously wealthy during all these government solutions, mm -hmm. so-called solutions. And have any of them worked? None. Not a single one. Not a single one. Mm -hmm. And in, indeed, what's am amusing about all this is that people with expertise in the year 2019, right before this pandemic was uh, structured, uh, they said at the World Health Organization, don't lock down. Don't pe put people out of their jobs yeah, if we ever right. have another pandemic. It was a huge study that they did, all thrown to the wind after this uh, Neil Ferguson guy came out. And what's interesting about him, he's a good test case, mm -hmm. is because he has made a career of serially appalling predictions. Mm -hmm. He said swine flu was going to kill us all. Mm -hmm. He said uh, bird flu was going to kill us all. He said mad cow disease was going to kill us all. He's got just one after the other. I, I have them all on the... Uh, uh, in the imagine board. being that bad at your job and getting but that... <laughs> you can never be fired for being wrong in the right direction. That's right, yeah. Uh -huh. And so he's all, he's wrong, but he's in the, wrong in the direction that the, the, the regime uh, behind him wants mm -hmm. him to be wrong. Right. And that these people are the ones who are in charge. Simple yeah. as that. So, and then, I mean, the lockdowns were another just absolutely abysmal policy. And one thing I want to get your, um, uh, that clearly, clearly any honest person has to admit that, right? That this, this was an abysmal well, policy. Honest. That's the key honest, word. Honest, right? And um, what I want to get your your ideas on is, because obviously not all science is, 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 is bad and junk, right? I mean, we depend on it all the time, but there, are, there, there's, there has to be like, like at least red flags, we might call them, that this is when you should start to become suspicious. And you already hinted at one, like once you just kind of like have a lot of pre-established science suddenly just thrown to the waste and overturned, like long-standing like agreement that was formed in like, you know, maybe not a hyper political environment. And we, we had such things on lockdowns and mass, right? And then suddenly, suddenly these things are just overturned by, almost as if by magic, right? So help us understand what are some, maybe what are some ways that maybe, because I'm trying to think of like the average podcast listener, right? They, they don't have the technical expertise that somebody like you does who can, who can just, you know, just do the raw analysis. There's got to be at least some initial indicators, right? That can help people to decide when they should be more or less skeptical of, say, the science, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the leading one is anything that comes out in favor of uh, some policy that you know is asinine. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, uh, that's it. I mean, if, if you can't go in and look at the original papers or data or evidence or arguments, uh, that's the best indication that you're being sold a line. Mm -hmm. It's not always true. Mm -hmm. But it is true enough that uh, you're going to have a very good batting average if you follow that. Uh, and it's worse, much worse than you think. You think science is better than, uh, I, I think your view of science is the old view that you might have had back in the more, 70s or before. Still too much, too, it's still actually too much, optimistic, much worse yeah. than you think. <laughs> the, the editor, the former editor, I think it was the British Medical Journal, mm -hmm. uh, came out in an editorial a while back, uh, uh, said that uh, it's best to presume that everything is wrong. Yeah. That comes out now. And I think it was a former er editor of The Lancet last year came out and said at least half of all papers are wrong. Right. And yeah. that, that, this, is, this is terrible. It depends on the field now. Any field that is connected in any way with people or uh, politics or sociology should be disbelieved automatically until you could find corroborative proof. Right. And we, and we, and we know this, right? There is, there's, well, what's that famous paper where it's why most scientific findings are false. I think is the name of it, right? There's, there's that, there's the obvious replication crisis, which people have seemed to forget about. Right. Yep. So like, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Continue. Sorry. Yep. Well, that's it. So it, it, there, there, there's obscure, but the, the problem is it's, it's worse than even that. Okay. So now we know we, a lot of us are know to suspect anything that government puts out in these in soft fields of medicine. It's not as strong as science as you would like to believe or education or sociology or any could, of these type of could, things that we know we all know to suspect them could you give us a, a recent example of this i haven't looked into it too much is the recent uh cdc and here this is about to get banned because i'm mentioning it the cdc statement on natural immunity you know what yeah. i'm talking yes. about 
Yeah. No, it's not since I see I can read the original study and I did and it's terrible. It is a it is an abominable error that they have made. So what they did was they looked at hospitalizations and illness mm -hmm. inside hospitalizations after patients had already been uh, admitted to hospital and some of which had previous vaccinations on record and some of which had on record uh, previous COVID positive tests. Mm -hmm. Okay, which a lot of them would have been associated with actual illness. Some of those would have been not associated with actual illness. And then they found that uh, the, the illness was more likely to be in those people who had only the naturally acquired immunity as opposed to the vax. So they said, oh, the vaccination is superior in providing immunity than having had the disease, which is preposterous. It throws mm -hmm. all of medicine on its head. Just it takes the last 100 years of medicine, <laughs> tosses it into the trash heap for this ridiculous conclusion. Now, mm -hmm. what's missing here? It's very clear, if you think about it for more than a second, that if the people who did not have COVID, I mean, who already had COVID, are just not going to get it again and they're not going to be sick and they're not going to show up in hospital. So their group, <laughs> their comparison group was all wrong. It was stupidly wrong. They should not have made such an idiotic mistake that they did make such an idiotic mistake and that there were, I don't remember how many authors there were uh, who signed on to this paper. There was 50 or 60 of them, some huge number. Mm -hmm. And all of them, uh, most of them are just uh, go-alongers. That's what happens with a lot of scientific papers these days. Okay. Yeah, I want to get on that. Put my name on that. And they do right, it. Yeah. Say in the paper, there's three or four people who are experts mm -hmm. in the same way Neil Ferguson is. And this stuff gets passed off. Mm -hmm. It's nonsense. Be you look to the Brownstone Institute uh, and look up acquired immunity or natural, they call it natural immunity. Uh, it, the, the proper phrase it used to be before 2020 was naturally acquired immunity or yeah, just plain uh -huh. acquired immunity. Mm -hmm. And they have a list of uh, other studies that are not produced by experts. Uh, I don't remember how many they have now. It was up to, well, dozens anyway. It's, dozens. it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a lot. It's a mm -hmm. lot. Now, how does this happen? How do they get away with that? Was this, was this just a... <laughs> Was this just a simple mistake? Like, okay, was, okay, like, so like this, this, is, this is the line, right? Is, is, it, is, it, is, it ignorance, is it ignorance or malice? That's always the question. Right? Oh, yeah, this there's a combination good. of both. Why, uh -huh. Por que no los dos? Wait, we could have both. Yeah. <laughs> we could have both. We could have ignorance and malice. And the, and the, and the, and the, and the malicious person who's dumb is going to be the worst of all. Mm -hmm. So we have these people, these experts, wanting to please the powers that be. Mm -hmm. and uh, cutting these corners like this and rushing these things to publication, even though they might know themselves, there's not quite kosher. So we mm -hmm. have both. We absolutely have both. The CDC, the people touting, I think, you know what? They know better. They must know better. They're not completely ignorant. They're not that mm -hmm. dumb. They can't find a flaw this large. Yeah, I can't so they, believe they, they that. They say and said, you know what? It's, it's it's, this, is, this is where they have all embraced the noble lie. Mm -hmm. It's better we let this go that encourage more people to get vaccinated because they might even truly believe that vaccinating large segments of the population is ideal. Mm -hmm. So they're willing to lie. Yes. They're willing to lie about it. That's that's the appalling thing. And we, and, and, we know, and we know they're willing to lie because they've done it before. They, oh, they, many they, times. We have oh. it on. Oh, we, mm -hmm. we have document. Camera, I mean, it's I, all I can do is sputter. We have, uh, I put on my blog today, as someone could not, my, not me, but somebody compiled a list of these statements. Oh, Biden says, no, we're never going to mandate vaccines. Uh, mm -hmm. Pelosi, no, we're never going to mandate vaccines. All of them, one by one after the other. And then, of course, what happened? Masks don't work. Now masks are mandated. Yep, exactly. is, right, yeah. Well, you know, we had to tell you this because you guys weren't responsible enough or smart enough to handle the truth. Like it really is a horrific condescension and arrogance, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. So, so, all right. So, so uh, sort of crude utilitarianism. Yeah. They, we can see it like, yeah. Cause I always, w w once we think somebody is wrong, then it does make sense to look for some type of error theory. Right. And, and like to, to start to examine. That's wait, right. this is, What's after you prove them wrong, yes. Yeah, that's, after, that's, after you do it, right. Uh, otherwise, you prove them wrong, then why? Then you seek out for why. Not, not yeah. the other way around. Right, then it's a fallacy, right? The old fallacy of bulverism, the other way Absolutely. around. Absolutely. Um, so, so, yeah. I've had like, in the book, too. You, you do. Your book is a great, and I want to go through some of those here in, in a minute. But that is that is important, right? You can't start giving some story of why somebody is wrong if you haven't first shown that they are wrong. Absolutely. But once we once we show that they are wrong, we do want to know why. Like, what's this, what's, the, what's, what's the story here? And it seems like, yeah, it seems very plausible, People want to kind of 
see themselves as virtuous like the the public they don't know what to do with themselves uh you know we'll just we'll have the noble lie to go back to plato and uh if we're wrong so what it will send them in the right direction anyways so just that's it it right yeah that's it yeah yeah Yeah, i mean despicable stuff right but uh, i mean this is this is where we're living now you said um Here's another thing that I'm trying to understand because, you know, I, we're on the same page with a lot of like a lot of this just does just seem absolutely insane to me. So I'm trying to understand, like, what's <laughs> what's the actual game here? Is this is this a game of where, again, uh, ignorance or malice, but probably both. Um, is it we made mistakes and now it's this perpetual game of trying to cover for those mistakes. And it's just like <laughs> it's just like the snowball that keeps going and going and going. Or is it really something even more nefarious than that? Is it really just a, a, a de- more deliberate attempt at restructuring and organizing society oh, both. as a whole? But you think it's both? Okay. I think it's both. I think at the mid levels where the midwits rule, uh, where mm-hmm. the experts live, uh, it's exactly that. You, you don't understand, uh, if you've never done science, the love, the absolute un- unfailing love of scientists for their models. They cannot give them up. Uh, even when they're proved wrong, they do not give them up. They blame the data. They blame you. They blame every other thing but the models that they have lovingly cared for and created. Mm-hmm. So that that tendency is always there in the midwits, mm-hmm. uh, to use the disparaging phrase, which we should, because these people need to be uh, put down uh, several pegs. Mm-hmm. Above them are clearly the people who uh, leading uh, want to lead us in a direction of... Uh, Cattle, I guess. I mean, what's the phrase? You will own nothing and be happy. That's Mm. just not a catchphrase that they told us about, that they Mm -hmm. told us about. They want to build back better. Build what back better? You mean the the, the, the mistakes that you've made, the, the problems that you've caused, and we need to build? You want to add error, a top error for what? what? What What is it that we're going to build? And they speak of the new world order. These are all their phrases. This is not right. anything else. So that mm-hmm. that's definitely there. They have won this control through creating fear, mm-hmm. and it worked. Uh, the majority of us, the absolute majority of us everywhere uh, have bought into this fear. Right. And now in the in the majority of the world, uh, they have taken power mm-hmm. and they do not want to relinquish it. They are gaining far too much from it so that uh, they still enlist these experts below them. These people who aren't quite, you know, uh, some of them want to curry favor, as we said, and some of them just love their models so much. And they've picked from mm-hmm. the cadre of everybody with expertise, those mm-hmm. people who are most willing to help them. Mm-hmm. So that's the situation where there's not just one problem. There's many, many. Yeah. 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 Now we talk about the, you know, the, the experts with a capital E versus other people who have expertise. Um, yeah. It's, it's always just struck me to, you know, pay a little bit more attention to people like yourself or other figures too, like Martin Koldor for Jay Bhattacharya, certain people who have, who seem well credentialed, especially in areas where, where I'm not, who are not just going in the, the direction every time with the ruling class, even if they might share much of the same political ideology, right? Yep. Like that to yep. me is always telling, okay, if this person is parting ways and you can't really, you know, uh, question their credentials, right? And then they are, what happens every single time they are, they're horrendously slandered, right? Yeah. Horrendously slandered, shunned uh, from the, from the community at large, from the scientific community, like, like real, uh, relevantly credentialed people who have yep. somehow stepped out of line in some big way or small way, that tells me something has gone really, really wrong. Something has gone Absolutely. really, really wrong. Right, yeah. Talk this to us. Talk full, about it's this, full-blown right? Lysenkoism. That's what it right. is. And uh, the government has said uh, it does make science a lot easier to do when it comes down by dictate. Right. And anybody who deviates from the consensus, they're always, whatever field it's in now, is called a denier or a heretic, uh, mm-hmm. whatever you like. And so that's, that's the position we're in. Yeah. And there, you know, you, you, the, the, we could keep putting out, I put out week after week, I don't know, I've done over a hundred of these updates, mm-hmm. taking apart study after study, after study, analyzing all the data, the official data. Now this mm-hmm. is all official data showing, uh, everything they're saying is wrong. And I'm not the only one. There's lots and lots of us out there doing this, but our work is, uh, uh, recognized by a few, but it's not taken up by the government. And you can't show them. You could show them, for instance, you could show Biden uh, and Pelosi and these others. Here's where you said, 
you are never going to uh, uh, mandate vaccination. All right? You're never going to do this. You said it here, 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 here. And now you're doing it. What do they say? You nothing. have to get, yeah. Nothing. yeah they say right. nothing. Right. You have to get vaxxed. You have to get vaxxed. <laughs> so it doesn't do to mm-hmm. show them their errors. Nothing works. Those old fashioned strategies of uh, kindly showing out somebody's mistake do not work. Do not. The only thing we left we have to, uh, for in our uh, quiver is ridicule. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing that they hate and despise more than anything. This this is this is true. Yeah, Mark, yeah. Mark Mark Twain always used that quite effectively. In fact, um, you know what's funny? <laughs> this has kind of like been a pet peeve of me. So I'm I'm, I'm a Catholic convert. I think you're. Uh, are you cradle Catholic? Yep. Or, uh, yep. Yeah. So you know all this stuff, the, the insanity, right? Uh, of what's going on is is a lot of times people think, uh, yeah, you know, it just it just sounds like. Uh, the dark ages again in Galileo. But the funny thing is, is when you actually look into the Galileo case, uh, actually pretty good, right? Like, yeah, like, you know, he was, he had his like luxurious exile, but for the most part, he was criticized on the best science they actually had at the time, right? Yep. <laughs> the dude didn't get a completely unfair hearing when you actually look into the case. And same thing, like, I mean, like you, you look at Aquinas and, and what's actually going on in the intellectual culture back at the time, it was a culture of exceedingly rich debate right so how did, it, how did it get so flipped around it's like no the perversion is just is very modern right and it's and it's painted as as like some yeah. like lingering effect of religion but you look at you know no 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 it's not religion right. yeah uh-huh. the, the right. people uh-huh. who refuse to look in galileo's telescopes were other professors just as now right That's, uh-huh. that hasn't changed galileo was a pain in the ass and made himself a pain in the ass by being deliberately insulting to the pope yeah, provocative you know, to the pope and, all that, and he right. went way beyond uh, his available evidence so his critiques had nothing to do with uh his science that that that's always been uh, which was which was in any case wrong, mm-hmm. so that does that 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 that's beside the thing. And no scientist ever likes to be criticized, ever. They mm-hmm. never did. They say science is self-correcting, which of course number one implies that there must be uh, at least some propositions in science that are wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, what's there to self-correct? It's either correct or it isn't. So mm-hmm. it's self-correcting because there are a suite of propositions in there that are just plain wrong. So we should be credulous about any scientific proposition we hear. And scientists are always debating each other. And uh, what was it? Uh, who was it uh, that said this? I always forget. A science advances by one funeral at a time. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's an infam- uh, famous quote. I can't remember the originator. One of the physicists from the twenties. Anyway, mm-hmm. that's true. So that 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 hasn't changed at all. Now it's just this form of government that we have uh, mm-hmm. that selects out those compliant scientists who will agree with the government, and or with the rulers or with the ruling class. Uh, that is the main difference. Science is, was all, science itself, the process of it, was always a bloody mess. And we also have other phenomena going on in here. Besides just that, we have uh, the expansion team effect, I call it. I think I call it this in the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been an enormous amount of money flood uh, into science, and new universities have cropped up since the uh, you know the 40s and the 50s. I don't know how many more, orders of magnitude more. Mm-hmm. And which are staffed by scientists. Now you can't, and you you can't uh, indefinitely expand uh, the number of scientists that you have because it takes it takes uh, a certain level of ability that not everybody has, mm-hmm. and that's of course a forbidden theory, to, a forbidden thought. You're not allowed to believe in uh, inequality. You're you, you are supposed to believe in the blank slate that if everybody was raised in exactly the same way and with the same environmental conditions, anybody could be a genius could, mathematician. Could do anything. I could have been in the NBA. That's right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All of it, of course, is preposterously false. I go into all that in the book. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but uh, because it is believed, mm-hmm. uh, at least by the, the woke crowd of that side of the government, and even if it isn't believed by those who are willing to go along with it, but who just want to shut them up, mm-hmm. uh, we have uh, and have had for the past Oh, really since the late uh, 60s into the 70s, and it's only accelerated since, Mm -hmm. quota hiring. We've hired uh, uh, all sorts of people who are not qualified Mm -hmm. in order to get our diversity and perversity quotas up to whatever current standards are. Mm -hmm. And uh, this this was uh, the impetus behind the creation of all those studies department that you've heard of. So women's studies wasn't a thing. 
there was no such department until uh, they wanted to up the number of women they had on the payroll to get the the, the gender balance uh, redressed. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and in order to do that, you just can't take a woman, a professor in and say, okay, now you're a mathematician. You can't do that because she can't do math. Uh, supposing, and or you can't just stick her in a in geology or something like that. So what do you do? Well, let's create this field called women's studies. Mm. What what harm could possibly come from it? We'll have black studies. We'll have grief. Now that all we have all these grievance studies. What harm? Mm. Well, we see the harm can come from it. They're now <laughs> right. taken as experts and their authorities, and and then they start looking at and when you have I, I go into this deeply in the book. Whenever mm. you have these quota hires, it always absolutely always it's an adamantine law of uh, of sociology that you mm -hmm. must lower standards mm -hmm. the, the, right. what always happens is they promise when they're going to do these quota hires that standards will never be lowered of course it's going to be uh even better mm -hmm. diversity is our strength Mm -hmm. so we're going to be made better all this. And then, of course, as, as the quota hires happen, uh, standards must fall. Standards do, in right. fact, fall. Mm -hmm. They have to. Otherwise, uh, for instance, look at the uh, women in going into the military. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to uh, further and further uh, mm -hmm. lower the standards of physical capability mm -hmm. in order to allow women to remain in place. So this is not equal pay for equal work. It's uh, it's unequal pay for unequal work and allowing women who can't do something in in order to get these quotas hired. So the same thing has happened in science. They've gone after math. In California, they're going after math now in a big way. Mm -hmm. They reject the idea. The, the, the official government stance is to reject the idea that any kid uh, can be gifted in mathematics. Everybody mm -hmm. is the same. Everybody is above average. Mm -hmm. Everybody can be trained equally at, at a level of mathematics. So they've elim they're eliminating their uh, advanced programs in mathematics. Mm -hmm. And they're changing uh, not just at the lower levels, but they're changing this in universities too. Every single scientific organization, the American Geophysical Union, the American Physical Society, the American Statistical Association, the American Mathematical Society, the American Medical Society, on and on, are all now completely woke. They're yes. trying Right. Increased mm -hmm. diversity. They're trying to change what they do to lower standards. Is they change the definition. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about. Uh, they don't talk about uh, physics. Well, they say so and so is a physicist, but no. What what so and so studies is physicist and the the, the gender of physics or the <laughs> sexuality of physics or mm -hmm. wh whatever it is. But they're all now classed as physicists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's another reason why science is getting poorer and poorer. There's too many people because of too much money. And there's now all this woke nonsense and the quota hires, which always drags things down. Right. Uh, and it's only going to get worse. It did, This is just a negative feedback and it builds upon itself. So, I mean, what's the uh, what's the what's the prediction from this? Is the whole thing just have to explode at some point and maybe we start fresh? Is there any way of trying to to right the ship at this point? I know this isn't a book about policy, but I'm just curious. No, uh, it, there's no policy in here. Uh, so what, what I think needs to be done is you can't fix the system uh, as it is. Yeah. There are some groups out there that make a valiant effort, like the National Association of Scholars. There's a heterodox academy. We saw, was it yesterday or the day before, they announced they're having University uh, of the Austin, University of uh, Austin. Uh, but right. uh, the people staffing it are all the same. They're they're all progressives of one way or another. So, right. Yeah. You talk about blank. You talk about the blank slate. Well, who's kind of the champion of that? Stephen Pinker. Yeah, he's <laughs> listed on it. So okay, they want to get away from the worst excesses of wokeism, but you yeah. have to abandon it completely. Right. So what we need to do is what the same thing we need to do in our own neighborhoods, uh, family and friends, and so forth. So we need to form our own network of scholars. Mm -hmm. You hear people talking about building a parallel economy. Uh, we need to do the same kind of thing for our intellectual uh, endeavors. There's no other. There's no other solution. Trying yeah. to we we can and should also try the the same thing. The trick they 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 uh, they played on us in the long march through the institution, mm -hmm. where they just insinuated themselves and in, as a cancer and grew right. until it metastasized and is now killing the body. Yes. Fine, right? Mm -hmm. We could do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's very difficult uh, to do so. You you have to be uh, young, a new starter, and be uh, a believer in reality and also willing to keep your mouth absolutely shut. And not only that, but I mean, the people on the left, too, I mean, when when you're kind of a crude utilitarian, I mean, scruples are a burden. 
right? Yep. <laughs> scruples are a burden, right? So there's just certain things that I think, you know, people like us would just not be willing to do to achieve a particular end because it would be an evil thing to do. Not That's always great. such the case with people on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. No, no, no. We're not dealing. <laughs> There's all levels of people we're dealing with here. That's that. It's hard to make a blanket statement. Just like what, what, what's wrong with science? Well, there's many things wrong with science. The people at the top are corrupted, right? Uh, utterly. They're, they've embraced evil. The American Medical Association came out yeah. uh, oh six weeks ago or something or two months, and said we should no longer have sex on birth certificates. Insane. Why? Insane. And now, because of that, though, uh, they've attracted the new and upcoming uh, students, uh, doctoral uh, medical doctor students, who are now insisting on uh, having class given to them in all of this woke and gender theory framework. Mm -hmm. It's the students themselves uh, who are pressuring uh, the professoriate at all these various medical so schools. And mm -hmm. the professors, of course, uh, maybe themselves are not caving, but the administrators are. Right. The administrators, that's another reason why we know colleges are doomed. Uh, you can get a degree, a degree in college administration. So that tells you right there, it's nothing but a bureaucracy, mm -hmm. a part of the expertocracy. Right. So it's a completely woke at the top. And, and there's no way to you can think you're going to vote yourself out of it, just like you think you can vote yourself out of the problems we have here. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So, yeah, let's talk. Let's dive a little bit more into the, the gender theory is the big one right now. And, and you're right. This is no. taken grip and taken hold at a rate even faster than I expected. And I tend to be a pretty pessimistic guy. Yep. Right. A yep. friend of mine who works for a railroad company just sent me all the documents that have been sent to all the employees there pushing all this stuff. And it was far worse than even me, a very pessimistic guy expected. Like it's, it's, it's thoroughly and utterly insane. Now, of course, they'll tell you, well, this is just, this is just science evolving. Haven't you heard? This is just the science. Now, if, like, this is obviously patent nonsense, right? Because I mean, some of these questions are deep, actual philosophical questions, like yep. philosophy of nature, no philosophical anthropology. So they're not even properly scientific questions, right? Absolutely. But, cer but certainly the vast majority of the science has fit with the common sense philosophical framework that all of us have, have thought. So like, that's not, even, that's not even a question. Talk to us a little bit about this and how you we start to address some of these issues, especially if somebody wants to tell you that this is you're just you're just living with the science of 1819, Dr. Briggs. This isn't science. science for, right? for one thing, it's not it's not a scientific question. It's mm -hmm. just not a scientific question. It is a, right. it is a question of metaphysics. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that there's no other way to put it. You you can uh, you have to understand that there are things that have natures, and we can understand natures and essences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you can be, and that's the realist position. And that's the yeah. position we take. Or you can and, be what uh, are called nominalists and say mm -hmm. and say and claim there is no such thing as a definition uh, mm -hmm. of an essence or, or a nature. Everything is what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. But there's no way to be a consistent nominalist. There's no way to hold with that. And we know it in all sorts of ways that they use it. So we hear the term trans woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's trying to be a nominalist and say, well, if I feel like a woman, I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. But in order to say a trans woman, you have to first know what a woman is. You have to have. In other words, you have to, you have idea, to uh, right. at base know exactly what a woman is. And in, in mm -hmm. other words, you have to embrace realism. Mm -hmm. And so, if you know what a woman is, mm -hmm. you know that the person you're calling a trans woman is not a woman, That's and right. trans is therefore uh, nothing but a synonym for not a, not a woman. That's right. So there, there are no such things as transsexuals. There mm -hmm. are no such things as homosexuals. Mm -hmm. There are no such things as anything but male and female. Mm -hmm. In fact, the term homosexual started a little over 100 years ago. It meant a person abnormally interested in having uh, pseudo sexual relations with members of the same sex. Yeah. Uh -huh. A heterosexual was coined at exactly the same moment by the same person, meant a person abnormally interested in having sexual relations of people of the opposite sex. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what it meant. It meant an abnormality from the beginning. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and it's still an abnormality. All of these things are abnormalities. Uh, right. In other words, they go against the nature of things. Right. That's yes. what we call it a perversion of nature, uh, mm -hmm. something gone. So they're. they're Something that goes against the essence of something. Right. So that's mm -hmm. the natural law idea that we yeah. were very familiar with. But uh, so they try to rescue this uh, by bringing in some observations, which they call scientific observations, mm -hmm. in that uh, 
some people are born uh, genetically damaged uh, mm -hmm. for one reason or another, and perhaps their chromosomes don't aren't, aren't exactly either XX or XY or something like this. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't change the definition. And they always lie about the number of people who are, are like this. It's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and, it's, and it's the, the far from the majority of people who want to identify as transgender. Yeah. The, yeah. the intersex people, they call them. But the vast majority of all of them uh, are, are close enough to either male or female to be male or female, uh, but with the genetic deficiency. Now, if right. your dog goes into the street, and uh, unfortunately, gets hit by a car, and his mm -hmm. leg uh, is whoosh, one of his legs. There it goes. Sad, sad, sad thing it happens. Uh, is he no longer a dog because he has only three legs? Are there no such thing as dogs? Do we have to say dogs don't have four legs by nature because some have three? No. Right. We all recognize that this is something that has gone wrong, and the right. nature of a dog is to have four legs. Yeah. And uh -huh. this is, uh, so every position that they take, and this is what I point out in the book, every position that they take leads to an open contradiction. Mm -hmm. They have to believe simultaneously two, two things which contradict each other. Mm -hmm. And of course they can do that with ease. They're, they're not thinking, they're just <laughs> reacting. Belief is their uh is their primary uh their primary motivation and if i can just interject this one this one's complicated to explain it i've never tried to actually explain this to anybody else except in writing yeah mm -hmm. when you point this kind of thing out mm -hmm. which i'm not the first to have done uh, mm -hmm. by far uh, and it's often pointed out these same sort of arguments against gender theory and uh, homosexuality mm -hmm. and all these kinds of things uh, they may acknowledge your arguments because they have to see the logic in them mm -hmm. And they see that they have nothing else to stand on except their desire. Mm -hmm. And that is what I call the meta fallacy. Right. They believe something because it has been proved false, <laughs> which is a very strange thing. But by, by it being proved false, clashing with their desire proves to them that they must, in fact, be right. Mm -hmm. And that is because uh, in the absence of God, we have made ourselves God. Right. Uh -huh. Somebody has to be the author of these natures, of these essences, mm -hmm. of anything, not, not just male and femaleness, but of anything of a flower, of a tree, of a, uh, of a, of a bacteria, of all of that. Mm -hmm. And to say that you're able by your desire mm -hmm. to change mm -hmm. uh, your own essence is to make yourself into a God, to give yourself creative powers we don't have. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the essence of all of that, uh, and that's right. the that's the background of and, all of that. That's that that's what we have to uh, we have to get them to stop thinking like that. Right, but it, but all this stuff is linked, right? We know that, that that these you know nominalism, for example, has you know deep connections. Uh, obviously, not just to atheism, but it runs through atheism, right? Um, has connections to Christianity as well, historically, right? But yep. most 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 people think that the, something went off the rails there, right? Uh, but it, it was did happily, with Duns Scottus, baby. Yeah, it was it was happily it was happily you know picked up by uh, certain you know skeptical and atheistic thinkers, and it's and it's it's come right on down through, and we can see how that sort of helps to support in a in a paradoxical and ultimately incoherent way a lot of this gender ideology and and you're right but what's even more insane is not just that it's insane uh it's not just that they lack a definition of what a woman is and we know this is a big issue in philosophy of gender right now like they can't get a definition because if you don't think that a woman is if you're coming from the natural law of you right is is something that is at at a certain readiness has a certain disposition we would say to to fulfill a particular biological or reproductive role right now whether it actualizes all those capacities or whether it has defects is irrelevant right there is some ontological Absolutely. fact of the matter even if there's epistemological blurriness that is a distinction that is almost always missed right it's always there right absolutely now if you abandon that definition you're kind of you're you're stuck in this game that they cannot in principle solve right of what should we base it on stereotypes well that ain't going to work right yep. so it's just this game of like they they either keep making the definition too big where there's people who fall into it that they don't want in there or too small where people aren't included that they want in there and they but the point is is not only are they not ever going to get a definition because they're not basing it in reality but they don't they don't actually have one yet we're basing basing policies off of this, right? We're basing policies off of something that is insane and doesn't even have any 
any stability in and of itself, right? Exactly. Like, there's, there, there's no way you can win in these arguments. That's it. They're, they're all self-contradictory, every single mm -hmm. one of them, without exception. Uh, right. there, I don't know how many hundred or hundreds of uh, genders they've now come upon or invented for themselves, each of them uh, having that same core fallacy at its heart. And so there's no way that you could win. It's, it's pure might makes right. That's right. all these policies are. It's might makes right. They have the might. They're using it uh, effectively. They're using it very effectively yeah. in, in all of these areas. And help us. Let's go into some of the fallacies now, because I don't know if you have a name for this this fallacy, but it it it, it <laughs> just lying. Maybe it's just lying, right? Where um this idea of like, well, we're gonna push this. I read this in the document of my buddy's uh, corporate uh, company uh, manifesto, if you want to call it that, where, you know, you, we're going to, we're going to let, uh, people use the, the bathroom that they want. And you have to use the pronouns because we want to be inclusive and neutral, but like, there's nothing neutral about that. Right? right. Like that's as right. soon as, as soon as you decide that's a policy, you have just discriminated against everybody yep. who, who believes yep. in reality. Right. That, like you, that, that, that's absolutely right. I, I have both of those. There's two fallacies there. Mm -hmm. One is the imposing your beliefs fallacy and the other being all judgmental. That's fallacy. it. You've got it. Yeah. Explain those to us. Yeah, so, uh, the, the, the famous example, uh, for good or for bad, is when Dianne Feinstein, the, the senator, was quizzing Amy Comey Barrett when she was coming up for one of the district court judgeships. Mm -hmm. And she accused, Feinstein accused Barrett of imposing her beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that was that resonated with, uh, with all of the propagandists who reported on this. And they said, yes, we can't have somebody getting up there who's Catholic and imposing their beliefs. Mm -hmm. What they need to do is be neutral, as you said, or that kind of thing. But no. It's impossible. You're, what you're saying is, I don't like your beliefs. I want you to impose my beliefs. You can't not impose any belief if you're a judge. Being a judge just is to impose beliefs. That right. is the job of a judge. Mm -hmm. So some beliefs have to be imposed. Barrett, uh, in my view, infamously ran away from it, said, I'm not going to use my Catholic uh, right. upbringing mm -hmm. and this stuff. Oh, and she stayed. She pulled, she pulled a Kennedy. She pulled a Kennedy, yeah. Uh-huh. She did run away from it, but somebody's beliefs have to be imposed. And what they're saying by that is they want you to, they want you to feel bad. Oh yeah, I can't impose my beliefs. That's terrible. I'll just have to, well, what beliefs are you going to uh, accept then? Somebody's views have to be imposed. And the same thing with being judgmental. It's not in the least bit wrong to be judgmental. When they say, hey, you stop that. You're being judgmental. We come back right at them and saying, are you judging me? Right. Right there, they're judging you right back. So being judgmental, it's another circular argument. Of course you have to be judgmental. Mm -hmm. So at core, we're always arguing about what's proper, what's true, what is a good society, what does it mean to be the good, what does it mean to be evil, all of that. And we, we pretend we've glossed over all these kinds of things. And they don't want to have that discussion at all. So those, those are very deep fallacies uh, in everything. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. These these are really good because you 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 give names to one to, to certain fallacies, uh, and, and you're right. Fallacies are essentially endless. They keep being invented oh, yeah. all the time, right? So we got to get some good names to these. I like the one that, that you pointed out because uh, this one is is so obvious and it frustrates me to no end. The it's controversial fallacy, right? Ah, which yeah. is just a which is just a way for the for the talking heads to try and get you to think that something's wrong without being way too flagrant about it even though it is so explain that one to us well you said right? it you 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 just you've just explained it uh, a propagandist will say uh, you know uh, so and so's position is controversial right and they want you to in make the inference that it's bad it's wrong because it's right. controversial because mm -hmm. it's controversial and they and it, when you call the propagandist on it and say hey you just uh you just interjected yourself into the story here they say no no i'm just reporting on the news it, it is in fact controversial mm -hmm. no it's always a lie uh, propagandists all lie not you can't trust any of them none of them yeah. whether they call themselves conservatives or uh, or whatever they call themselves uh, at the other uh, at the other places none of them can be trusted absolutely right. none of them it's it, we, we can only look to sources like yourself Anything outside of the regime structure, mm -hmm. anything that is involved and in, in, in is big and that kind of thing is we, yeah. you cannot. It's not to say everything they say is wrong or anything like that, but it's that same test that you asked it's for the in the beginning. Assume yeah. everything mm -hmm. they say is false until you can prove it otherwise. Assume right. 
And it, it's kind of it's kind of embedded in a deeper Mott and Bailey fallacy, right? Where it's yeah. like, okay, I know what you're leading yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. You're leading, you're, you're leading with this idea of trying us to make an inference that controversial equals bad. When you're pressed on it, you retreat back and just say, oh, no, it's just controversial because yeah. it's debate. Always a lie. Right? Yeah, it's like, no, Always you're, a lie. you're just lying, right? You're just you're just a propaganda. I, I, I like yeah. the name Mott and Bailey. I didn't want to use it, though, because it always confuses people. <laughs> which mm -hmm. one's the Mott? Which one's the Bailey? And no one has familiarity with those. You're right. Uh, mo moat like structures and uh, piles of rocks anymore. So I changed it to the controversial fallacy. I think that's more memorable. Yeah, all no, all right. of the fallacies I have, absolutely every one of them, as far as I know, has a good Latin tag. Right. But nobody can remember Latin anymore, so I went with uh, more memorable Good names. Things. Yeah, no, it's it's helpful, and people are going to love that. That this book is going to be so useful just for studying these informal types of fallacies. Now, the other um, thing you had in your book that uh, is essentially what I've come to realize. I mean, I've always kind of known it because if you study history, you know this. But now you live in it in real time. Is that propaganda works? Oh, absolutely. It's effective, and you've seen it happening in in absolute real time, and it's kind of frightening, right? Because you know you read about the histories, and you know, like, oh yeah, it, it clearly is effective, but then you just see it, it just completely taking over a society in just a matter of a couple of months, and uh, kind of spooky stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Well, propaganda that that propaganda works is not a fallacy. It's it's right. a it's a truth won by hard experience, right. uh, but it. it when you join it with uh, voting in our democracy, that's their big phrase right now, our democracy. Sacred, our sacred. Sacred, sacred. democracy and voting. Uh, then we have a whole string of fallacies that crop up, uh, namely like the wisdom of crowds. Democracy is good because we get so-called will of the people, which mm -hmm. of course we do not. We do not get the will of the people when we're being bombarded by propaganda uh, mm -hmm. continuously. What we get is the will of the people who are instructing the propagandists. That's the old oligarchs and the, and the rulers uh, behind them. This is well known too. This is not a surprise or anything. But the one the one voting fallacy that I think that, if you don't mind, I, I just digress onto that for just a minute, yeah, that please. I don't think mm -hmm. is well recognized, is that voting itself, the act of voting, and we've seen this, but I don't think put a name to it, mm -hmm. uh, causes dissension. And that happens uh, uh, in in one of two in one situation. So when you have a group of people who are voting on what's best to do, either who's going to be best for the office or what which of several policies are going to be best, as long as everybody in that group or the vast majority of them agree with the goals of either the policy or the or the person going to be elected. Voting can work, and there's no propaganda and all this kind of stuff pushing people one way or the other. Voting is a very sensible thing. Voting is, of course, what happens at the very small scale, uh, you know, in small organizations and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. where everybody shares the same goal. Voting is a very good thing to do. Mm -hmm. However, when you have a, a vote on, say, who's going to be president, where mm -hmm. you have two big groups who have completely different goals for the direction that we should be going in, not just who's the best person is going to be there, but what are the best policies? Right. And they both want a, a, what are essentially diametric opposites. Mm -hmm. Then voting is a terrible, terrible thing. Mm -hmm. Voting is going to be seen as a great evil mm -hmm. because the people who won and have embraced the wrong idea have just proven might makes right, which everybody knows is a fallacy. Right. Mm -hmm. And the people who have won, as they have just done in their fortification of the election, mm -hmm. who uh, look at the people who voted against them and they see them and they think, oh, my God, these people came close to ousting us. Mm -hmm. These people have to be taken care of. Boom, boom, we boom. can't allow them to do this again. So this the, the idea that the voting is there in the first place creates this tension and it creates acts against the parties. It's mm -hmm. going to only increase dissension, uh, bad blood, uh, and worse, just right. because we have voting in place. We, right. we and, should never allow voting when 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 there are major disagreements. Right. And does anybody deny this? Right. I mean, just look at. Right. I, I think they do. Of course they do. Yeah. They they, uh, they they lie and go back to well, we're getting the will of the people. Uh, this is the most popular <laughs> president ever. This is you know, on he's, he's unifying us, right? He's, yeah, he's the, what, what they yeah. believe, uh, what what they internally believe. Wow, that's entirely different. But what they say is this. Right. Yeah, this is this is obviously we're not going to be able to cover everything in this book. I'll have to bug you back on to talk more because there's so many sure. good cha good chapters here that uh, I would love to cover with you. I mean, you've got chapters on. on we did two out of 28. 
Yeah, you, <laughs> it, it, you go all the way through to miracles and atheism and all that. But just for this conversation, is there any other relevant fallacies or things that you think we should mention before we uh, wind up and let the good listener know where they can get a copy? Of your my, my favorite one, I sent this one to you, I think, too, just because it's it's very popular out there right now. Mm -hmm. is Everybody's heard of the appeal to authority. I think That's most right. people remember that from their high school days or something mm -hmm. where you say something is true because an authority, an expert said it. Well, we mm -hmm. know that's false. But now what we have uh, everywhere is the appeal, the appeal to non-authority. Mm -hmm. We know things are true because someone who is absolutely ignorant of a subject has said so. <laughs> so we all listen to Greta Thunberg. Or we all listen to our favorite actor or actress or football player or something who say, support the regime, support the regime. And they're right because they're ignorant. All right. <laughs> this, is the, this is the appeal to celebrity uh, or to youthful innocence that uh, is just another form of propaganda. But it, it's one of the biggest fallacies that we live by. Even people on our side. Oh, we're so happy when we get a celebrity on our side. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, the yeah. appeal to the celebrity. Really. It's yeah. just absolutely insane. Right. Really. It's That's it. <laughs> right but it's effective right it's like it's very who, effective who, yeah who can like that's kind of like a race of what the parties do these days is like how many how many celebrities can we get on our on our side right yeah and i guess i guess it doesn't even need to be explained why that's a fallacy right if you don't if you don't get that then i don't I hope not I, then I, I don't think I there's hope any not. hope yeah <laughs> all right so matt this is this has been a blast i know it would be we, we touched on a couple of good spicy but important areas and like look uh, i i um you know, I've got four kids upstairs and I'll be damned if I don't do what I can to fight the insanity of the world. So I really appreciate you coming in uh, and, and helping helping to do whatever small part we might play in, 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 in something hopefully good coming out of this. Right. Because because here's the other thing that I want people to know is and I get this a lot. And I'm sure you do, Matt, because uh, your, your your blog and stuff is very popular is the the uh, you're not alone. Right. For people who yes. are listening to this conversation, you are not alone. The problem is just most people are afraid to have this type of conversation in public, right? I get constant emails, messages in private of people who feel like they are alone. And they and they tell me, hey, I, I really resonate with, with you because it seems like we think the same way. You're not alone, right? Uh, that's part of the propaganda is this idea of trying to, yep. to marginalize yep. and isolate. So what we need is more people sacking up, being men, and, 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 and just Getting the truth out there, right? I, I like because at the end of the day, I don't know what else we can do. Honestly, I I, I don't. So, that's it. That's all we can do. Right. Yeah. That's it. That's so all we should always do. And we can sell at least half a million copies of your book, maybe as well. So it has to be. It has to be more than that to make me a millionaire. It's got to be on the order of like five hundred twenty-eight thousand. I get a right. dollar ninety a book. Perfect. Well, where can they get it? And uh, anywhere, anywhere now. Uh, Barnes and Noble or Amazon now. Uh, it, it's released December first, and then wherever you can get books. If so, if you're listening to this conversation beforehand, which you probably will, go pre-order it. I've already pre-ordered it. Read it, and then we'll bug Matt to come on and talk about it again here soon once it's out. So, why everything you believe is wrong by Doctor. William Briggs. We're going to link it in the show notes. Go grab a copy. Go also grab a copy of Price of Panic. And you've got a book on probability too. Do you want to just say anything about that? Oh, uh, well, that's yeah. uh, more of a scholarly book. Uh, people are welcome to buy it. It's yep. uh, called Uncertainty. It's about the philosophy of science, models, probability, and that sort of thing. Great. We'll link it all. So Matt, thanks so much. This has been a blast. Thank you for having me.